Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany, welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today, we are analyzing the Karen meme. As with any popular internet term, this meme has been used a lot, and I think that its meaning has evolved by being used in different contexts by different people. I think it's interesting to see where and when memes begin and how they change over time. Like, can we all even agree on what exactly Karen means anymore? Now I know some might say just me making this video is a bit Karen, which, okay, I'm kind of inviting the Karen comments now. Do I personally care in what context or what meaning you use Karen? No. But for the sake of this video, I think it's fun to dig deep and try to nail down what a true Karen is. All right, this is peak internet analysis, baby. What is Karen? Who is she? Most of us are probably familiar with the name or idea of Karen through this meme embodied by Kate of John and Kate Plus 8 fame with the iconic haircut that says, I'd like to speak to the manager. Karen characteristics include being rude to service employees, a sense of entitlement, white privilege, believing she is right even when she's clearly wrong, and speaking to the manager, calling the police, or threatening to sue. Typical physical characteristics of a Karen include a middle-aged white woman with the Karen haircut, which is usually an A-line bob or a dramatic pixie cut, often blonde, or with chunky highlights. Rude to service workers. You can absolutely judge a person by how they treat service workers, be it in retail, food service, customer service. These people work very hard for low pay with few or no breaks. And Karen either doesn't know this because she's never worked this type of job, or she knows and doesn't care. When interacting with Karen, there's not gonna be a kind greeting, there's no please and thank yous. She tends to treat workers like they work for her, and she definitely doesn't tip. There's a sense of entitlement. Karens feel entitled to special treatment, and rules and policies simply don't apply to them. This TikTok went viral recently because this woman feels so entitled to this parking spot that she is physically sitting on the car to block them from taking it. Get off of her car. Move on up, Krista. Come on. You're sitting on her car. I'm not sitting on her car. I'm leaning on it. Please back up. Krista, this is your right spot. There's two Just spots. Move Just move. Karen behavior. Karen seems to think she is the most important person in any situation, you know? She needs or deserves that parking spot. In a store or restaurant, she is the only customer that matters. And just like anyone else who's worked a service job, I have had my fair share of Karen encounters. Like, dude, when I used to work at a large coffee chain, sometimes a Karen would come into a busy store, long line. Where's my drink? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, what, what was your name? What did you order? Venti ice black tea, light ice, no water, no sweetener, six Splendas. Oh, okay, this is it. There's just a few drinks ahead of it in line and then it'll be ready. I'm in a hurry. Can you just do mine first? I, I'm gonna miss my train. So she's in a hurry, did not order ahead, came to the store, saw the line, waited anyway, ordered, and that expects her drink to be made instantaneously and then blames the workers for being late. Okay, ma'am. Or maybe take a situation like her drink was made wrong. A normal customer would probably say something like, Hi, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, I ordered almond milk because I'm lactose intolerant and this just tastes like regular milk. Would it be possible to remake it? I'm sorry, thank you. Oh yeah, no problem, it's policy. We'll remake it for you right now. Thank you, sorry about that. But Karen would say something like, Oh, oh my God, excuse me, my drink is wrong? I said almond, did you listen? Did you hear me? Because this, ugh, this tastes like whole milk. Actually, you didn't say almond, but okay. And when you're working in this kind of situation, part of customer service is to keep smiling because the customer is always right. Hi, how can I help you? Oh, you would like your drink remade and a refund? Of course, my pleasure, thank you. And even if you are perfectly kind and patient and helpful, Karens are still likely to verbally abuse minimum wage workers until they burst into tears. It's happened to me once or twice. I'm sensitive. And another of the classic Karen characteristics is the appeal to authority. Karen is the type to come in and try to return a shirt 
without tags, without a receipt. And when you tell her you can't do that, she wants to speak to the manager. Karen's the type to bump into your car and threaten to sue you, naturally. And the next Karen characteristic is white privilege and often racist tendencies. Do you guys remember when those two black men were arrested for sitting in a large coffee chain while waiting for a meeting? While Karen isn't always a customer, sometimes she is the manager. Or remember the time where the woman called the police on black men for having a barbecue in the park? So kind of combining both of those characteristics, the appeals to authority and the white privilege, because Karen is white, she trusts the police. She feels like they are going to believe her and be on her side. Meanwhile, people of color tend to fear the police for very obvious reasons that I can't talk about in detail or this video would get demonetized. These situations could turn into a matter of life and death over something that was a non-issue, was not illegal, was not wrong, but Karen felt uncomfortable or felt inconvenienced in some way. Just a few hours after I filmed this video, I saw this on Twitter, which has now gone viral. You've probably seen it. Um, this woman, well, I'll just show you a clip. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. I'm sorry, I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African-American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African-American man, I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. It is just beyond disgusting and diabolical for her to have literally said that. She made her intentions very, very clear. The Karens and the Beckys and the white woman and most recently Miss Amy Cooper know that the police are systematically racist and have and systematically target black people. Because they are aware of this, it is now added to their arsenal of weapons to use against black people and black individuals for no reason. They know the police do this. They know the police kill us disproportionately. So it is now used as a weapon. It is now a new tool to further discriminate against and dehumanize or even threaten the lives of Black individuals. Thank you, Amanda, for participating in this video. I asked her to respond to a few questions for this because I love her perspectives. If you are not familiar with her channel, it is fantastic. I highly, highly recommend that you guys check it out. So. Once again, thank you, Amanda, and there are going to be more clips of her in a little bit. Anyway, continuing on, a tweet went around last month asking, Does anyone else think the Karen is woman-hating and based on class prejudice? Um, oh my god. It's obviously not a sl Obviously. The whole idea of Karen being a sl is a hunk of junk, for me to say politely. Karen is a name. The N-word is not a name given to people. The fact that you can say, or the fact that I can only say one of that, those words on this platform should tell you which one is a s and which one is not a s Have you met someone who is named the N-word? No. Is it sexist? Are all women Karens? No. Karens are Karens. If you're behaving like a Karen, that's on you. Is it classist? I spoke with Angie Speaks a little bit about this, so I'm gonna take a quote from her. My take on the issue of Karen is that it's a word that was invented as a way to make fun of the pathological behaviors exhibited by privileged, usually white, professional managerial class women who weaponize their privilege, usually for arbitrary reasons, over the mildest inconvenience or discomfort. Like most language or memes that come from the internet and are used to poke fun at demographics and groups, it can be used pejoratively in a harmful way to dismiss valid concerns. However, big however, the term was used to critique a group of people in society who have significant class power over others. The term is punching up most of the time when it is used, not punching down at the vulnerable. 
So no, I don't think that Karen is a classist term. So let's get into the origin of the Karen meme to get some background because I've seen most internet, internet historians, meaning knowyourmeme.com, um, most people point to the origin of the Karen meme being either this Reddit post, this guy ranting about his ex-wife, or maybe this Dane Cook stand-up bit from way back. But actually, the black community has been using Karen to describe this type of white woman for a long time. And by the way, quickly, to state the obvious, so many internet memes and pieces of pop culture come from the black community, come from black Twitter, and typically do not get credited. That's a whole other topic to get into, but I will recommend some videos for you guys to check out on that topic. Here's a reply to that original tweet. Karen was a term created specifically by black women to talk about white women's interpersonal and state violence against us and our communities. Calling the police on us for getting coffee, threatening to have us fired, talking down to us at work, where we're now essential. And then I found an article called The Karen Memes and Jokes Aren't Sexist or Racist. Let a Karen explain. And this Karen is actually a black woman. She explains, Karen was a popular name for baby girls in the 50s and 60s, thus many Karens are, in fact, of the boomer generation, and that she had been named Karen by her parents to try to blend into white society by having a white-sounding name instead of a quote-unquote black-sounding name. So if Karen refers specifically to boomers or middle-aged women, should we use other names for other age groups? There have been these memes kind of going around also, sub-memes? suggesting different names like Becky or Susan. So let's dig into that a little bit. Specifically regarding Becky, calling younger white women Becky has also come from the black community. But from what I've seen, Becky has different traits than Karen traits. Take Becky, for example. It was rapper Sir Mix-a-Lot's 1992 song, Baby Got Back, in which a white girl, disgusted by the shape of a black woman's body, talks behind the black woman's back to her friend, Becky. Over the years, and partially thanks to Beyonce, Becky was popularized in the black community to refer to a white girl, especially one with backstabbing tendencies. Remember the barbecue situation? Her nickname was actually Barbecue Becky, in addition to Permit Patty and other nicknames that have been popularized by Black Twitter. So there are more situation-specific nicknames and memes, but I would say that generally, I argue that um, Permit Patty, Barbecue Becky do fall under the wide umbrella of Karens. Cultures from around the world use common names to describe archetypal behaviors. Karen and Becky are common names for white women. You hear them quite often. That's why they're used as like, now they're being used to represent white woman privilege. And we see it in songs. We see it Beyonce sung um, Becky with the good hair in Lemonade and Sorry. So it's currently now being used. It's taken a common name that a lot of white women are named and it is now the representation of white female privilege, which is often ignored or pushed aside when we're talking about feminism. Um, they'll completely ignore intersectional feminism and ignore their privilege that they have as white women. Becky and Karen memes and jokes should be understood in this context, part of a long tradition to use humor to try to cope with the realities of white privilege and anti-blackness. I think all that background information is very crucial to know and very interesting. But now we're moving on to a different topic and I didn't film the transition well, so here you go. Recently, especially because the Karen memes are kind of becoming more popular recently, I've gotten a few comments calling me a Karen, some in a negative way, but some in a positive way. And those are confusing because is there such thing as a good Karen? I don't think so. Here's the thing. Um, I've had many haircuts in my life. I've been a fan of the bob. I've even had a little bit of an A-line going on. I'm blonde, I'm a white woman, so I'm kinda Karen. However, according to the Karen characteristics that I have theorized, I do not behave like that. I am not a Karen, so I sleep soundly. Again, I feel like I'm just inviting like a million Karen comments, but feed my engagement, okay? Anyway, that brings me to the next topic. As this meme has become more and more popular in the mainstream, I've seen it used in different contexts, and I've noticed that some people use Karen to just describe any woman that annoys them or any woman that they don't like. White woman, that's a Karen. 
And okay, let's talk about this. Being on the receiving end of this as a white woman, offhand comment, being called a Karen, la la la, thanks Karen. It's obviously not a big deal. It is nothing to be personally offended about. Again, if you're not being a Karen, if you're not exhibiting Karen behaviors, you're not a Karen, so don't take it personally. Quickly going back to that tweet asking whether Karen is a woman-hating term, I don't think the name or term Karen is inherently sexist, but it certainly has been used in misogynistic contexts to where it's not about hating Karens or being actual Karens, it's about hating all women and just calling them Karen as an insult. And again, I don't personally care who uses this term right or wrong, quote unquote, but there is something to be said about the precious specificity of a meme, all right? Call me a meme purist, but I feel like memes have specific meaning, and if they are used in ways that disregard the meaning, then do they lose all their meaning? I am thinking way too deeply about memes today, and always. So for researching this video, I was looking through Twitter and just searching Karen to try to see what came up because I've been noticing some kind of alternative definitions of what a Karen is. And mostly it's like older white people calling each other Karens or seemingly getting confused about what a Karen is, calling everyone a Karen. Probably a lot of this going on on Facebook. One alternate Karen definition I found is someone who wants to kill the fun, the hall monitor, the snitch, the tattletale. And I had never really considered that to be part of the Karen narrative, you know? But let's see if there's any truth to this. If there is truth in memes, what is life? But by the way, this is probably why some people might call me a Karen. For my internet analysis videos, I tend to ask a lot of questions like, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this immoral? And some people might take that as, for example, people have called me a virtue signaler. You know, how dare I ask questions about humanity or internet things? Am I taking this too seriously? Am I taking the fun out of this? But alas, this is fun for me. So take that as you will. Karen, noun. Karen is the hall monitor. Karen is the sibling who, when you're in the middle of a great time, yells, Mom! Karen is a snitch. Karen knows more. Karen doesn't live by the rules, but insists you do. And this is my two cents, okay? In real Karen situations, Karen isn't snitching about anything legitimate. She's either contacting authorities because she's upset that she's not getting her way, such as speaking to a manager in a restaurant or a store, or she just wants to assert her power over other people. So I think that's really what is behind situations like the barbecue Becky scenario. Though yes, she was like, um, are you allowed to have the wood burning? Are you allowed to have the coal burning barbecue? She pretends like it's about the rule issue, but I think she cares less about the actual situation it's not that it's about someone breaking the rules and she's going to tell on them, whoever they are. It's the fact that it was specifically black men or a black family altogether. And she felt compelled to tell on them, to snitch to the police over a barbecue when that certainly would not have happened if the people there were white. Like, I think if she's right, then this is not a Karen situation. Like if a woman sees somebody lighting a car on fire and calls the police, She's not a Karen, she's a concerned neighbor. She's seeing a legitimate crime, it's dangerous to the community. Of course, I've gotta have a wholesome Southern accent. So if this hall monitor type is not Karen, then who is she? Because we need to have terms that are specific and define these actual behaviors. So I thought maybe we could call her a Debbie Downer or perhaps a buzzkill instead. There was also a video I saw on Twitter of this stair jump. Okay, just watch. I do understand. We, we've come a long way to get this. We're right here. I'm sorry, you're not allowed. We're right here. No, it's you don't. You don't legal, understand. Legal ramifications. No, there's no legal ramifications because yes, we're gonna. There is. There's one more try and then we're out. I will. You can get off my cart. Call the sheriff, please. This person's being belligerent. Not belligerent. Call the sheriff. Help me move please. this bitch. Help me move Call this bitch. Call the sheriff. Just go for it. So these guys are coming to do their tricks. They're on a bike. They're going to jump the stairs. 
I understand extreme sports, but this woman, obviously, she works for the school in some way and she is trying to stop it. She's the man, she's trying to shut it down. She's trying to ruin the fun. This accent is really sticking. Some people have called her a Karen. Is she a Karen? Does she have the Karen characteristics? Let's find out. Well, first, she may have the haircut. Second, she does threaten to call the police so many times. We can call the sheriff. Um, will you call the sheriff, please? Call the sheriff, please! However, it is her job to protect the school. She appears to be a school administrator supervisor type. And actually I found out that that school was actually near my hometown in Orange County, California. So I'm familiar with that type of lady. I had a few at my school. They drive their golf carts. Yes, they get drunk on power, but it's her job to stop people from jumping 20 stairs on a bike. This is a close call, you know? She's definitely a buzzkill and her literal job is basically a professional hall monitor. But I would argue she's not exactly a Karen. And that's my hot take. Then I saw this other post. A Karen will frequently post to the local Facebook page the following. I saw 10 kids riding their bikes and no masks were worn. What were the parents thinking? And again, referring back to the classic Karen characteristics, I would argue that's not a Karen. That sounds more like an overly protective, nosy suburban mom. And finally, we get to the Corona Karens, a special breed. Obviously, with the pandemic, stores have created new policies requiring customers to wear masks, stand six feet apart, and usually follow these little arrows on the floor to maintain orderly traffic in the store. But the Karens will not stand for that. There are videos going viral of people behaving like this. Wow. Wow. Oh, she's fitting! In the kindest terms possible, the biggest understatement, you could call them disgusting or selfish, but really, they are the worst type of people. They're deliberately putting other people's health and safety at risk, other people being essential workers who are largely minorities and who are definitely not paid enough to deal with that kind of bullshit. Now, on this note of Corona Karens, I have noticed um, there's kind of a political divide in the interpretations of what makes a Corona Karen. Is Karen the one militantly enforcing masks and social distancing? Or is Karen the one fighting to end the lockdown and also coughing in people's faces? Well, from what I've seen, the left-wing perspective, or really anyone who's not a monster or who believes in science, who are the Corona Karens? They are the people harassing nurses and essential workers. Rude to service workers? Check. They are the people who refuse to wear masks or comply with the rules. I work for Costco and I'm asking this member to put on a mask because that is our company policy. So either wear the mask And or... I'm not doing it because I woke up in a free country. Demanding special treatment, rules don't apply to me. Check. And the people coughing on others intentionally. What was that, we're sheep? <laughs> There's a lot there, but lack of self-awareness being deeply, deeply, incredibly wrong and doubling down, disgusting selfishness. And from what I've seen, the right-wing perspective of what a Karen is, is firstly, I've seen people describe anyone who even has any leftist or left-leaning traits, anyone who's a feminist, anyone who's a Democrat, they're all Karens. Just being mm, center-left, Karen. Doesn't matter what you're doing, doesn't matter what your behavior is, Karen. And then in terms of Corona, Karens are authoritarian because they're trying to force us all to wear masks and social distance, and that's anti-freedom. And also according to right-wingers, Karens are the ones who are angry and upset when they see people not social distancing or not wearing masks. Someone shared this video, the Snapchat from the Lake of the Ozarks. Unreal, what are we doing? I don't know what we're doing, but these young people are living their life. You're being a Karen, please don't be a Karen. Okay, so just to clarify, like caring about the policies that are in place worldwide to deal with this pandemic and minimize risks is Karen. And again, I think this is where more of that kind of buzz kill, hall monitor, I'm gonna tell on you narrative comes in. Like how dare you care about what other people are doing when other people's actions affect us and could literally get people sick and die. But hey, again, freedom. <laughs> We should all have the freedom to get ourselves sick, infect other people. That's what a free country is all about. 
Japan and much of Europe are moving to reopen schools and everything else as quickly as possible. When did the most powerful country in the world, the city upon a hill, turn into the United States of Karen? Hashtag reopen America. I'm truly amazed when people literally actually believe that the United States is the best country on the planet in every single way when it's been demonstrated that we're not. But again, patriotism. And this is my last video, and it's one that makes me very angry. I don't know this person's political leanings, but their strategy here is terrible either way. Hi, I have a medical condition that I'm not allowed to wear a mask, and I'm not required by HIPAA rule, re rules and regulations to okay. disclose that. Okay, can we shop for so, you? So, um, what does that look like? We I have private things I want to get that maybe shop, I don't want you to shop see. For you, but I can't let you in the store without a mask. Okay, so where's the regulations that state that? The regulations? Yeah. Because you're discriminating against me now. Do you know that? I'm, I'm, I'm you're discriminating you against that me. We can help you. No, because I have okay. private inf I have private stuff okay. that I don't want okay. you to see. And then you can call corporate office, but I can't help you. Okay, well you guys are gonna get a lawsuit because you can't. Let me shop in the store without a mask. Rules don't apply to me because I looked up some laws about things and I'm trying to use them for my advantage, even though it's probably not true. But who knows? Because privacy laws, people are just. They've found a loophole and now they're trying to use it and be like, see, you can't discriminate against me or I will threaten to sue, which is what she did. She's threatening a lawsuit for discrimination. Now that's a Karen. So there you go. I hope this video was interesting for you. I know that memes are silly jokes, but also memes are social and cultural artifacts that I find fascinating to dig deep into, you know? They say a lot about us as people. Please subscribe for more internet analysis if you enjoyed this video. And if you have other meme suggestions for me to take way too seriously, I will look into them. And stay tuned for my next internet analysis video. If you saw me sweating in this shirt, I have been, but I've been trying to hide it. And I just have to acknowledge my color scheme today. I mean, I know I'm usually very orange, orange and blue. It's all the same, but um, I went harder today and my hair is peach again. There's a lot of commitment to this color coordination. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, thanks, bye.